Hey, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pearl Together, and in this week's technique video, we're going to talk about steaking. And before everybody freaks out too much, I just want to say your knitting is not going to unzip like a crochet chain. It's, it's not going to happen. Knitting will unravel when you pull on it. It unravels back and forth, you know, from top to bottom, right? When you rip things out, like if you make a big bad mistake. But it does not tend to unzip in that same way side to side. Now, it is possible to pull out loops, you know, if you have a V-shaped stitch and you have you cut something between, but you'd have to pick at it and you'd have to kind of work at it. So what it follows is going to be a crocheted reinforced steak, and I'm going to show you how I chose to do the crocheted reinforcement and then do the sticking from a sample swatch that we're knitting for the Maya Cardigan Knit Along. So I'm, we knitted a sample, hopefully you did too, and I'm going to show you how to do the crochet reinforcement and then actually cut it. Before I get started with that though, I want to express my gratitude to four new patrons this month. Thanks so much to Amy, Jane, Laurel, and Jean. If you'd like to know how to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together and you can see what I'm offering for a small pledge each month. If you're not interested in becoming a patron, that's okay too. Just click the thumbs up, like and subscribe, leave a comment. All those things help. Okay, let's get started with the steak. All right, we're going to practice on our swatch here. And you can see this very center column right here is our target stitch where we're going to actually use the right leg of this white stitch and crochet it together with the left leg of these side stitches. So on this side, you'll have the left leg of this white stitch crocheted together with the right leg of the tan, tan one. So that's how we're going to reinforce that before we cut. When we get ready to, to cut the steak, we will cut the, the horizontal line, horizontal bit, of our target stitch here. So we'll have the right leg attached to this side, the left leg attached to this side, and we'll cut that horizontal bar inside that stitch. Okay, so the way we're gonna reinforce this steak here is by taking a smaller, smaller crochet hook than you use for your knitting, whatever millimeter that was, and preferably a yarn that's small enough, smaller than the yarn you knitted with. So I'm using a two-ply Shetland wool that is 100% wool, and I like that because it's a little more grippy. Um, I've done a steak with superwash and reinforced it with superwash yarn, and it was okay, um, but it did slide. The crochet chain kind of slid a little bit, so that made me slightly nervous. So what I'm going to do here is start on the, the left edge of the steak. So I'm going to turn this horizontally, and I'm going to follow the center column down to the edge here so that I make sure that, again, I'm gonna get the left leg of the white stitch and crochet it to the right leg of this tan stitch. So all I wanna do is follow the columns down to where I'm going to insert my crochet needle right at the very end. I'm just gonna draw up a loop to begin with. I am not a crocheteist, so try not to make fun of me for that. You can if you want. <laughs> I'm just gonna draw up a loop here and see there, I'm already having fumbling difficulties. But I'm just gonna draw up a loop into there. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting started correctly. So what I wanna do is kind of fold this in half so that I'm targeting, again, the left leg of this stitch and the right leg of this, and I'm gonna fold that down, following the columns down, so that I get right on track. And I'm gonna go in underneath both of those legs and just do a chain crochet. You can do a single crochet if you want, but it just adds more bulk and it's really not necessary, I don't think. So again, I'm just gonna make sure that I have the correct legs of the stitches I want, follow that down, go in underneath both of those legs, every, every one, and just do a slip crochet. Okay, so in under both legs, go ahead and hook that loop through and hook that loop through the one on the on the hook on the crochet hook. You can tell I don't crochet very much. I don't even know the proper terms. But I'm just doing a slip. It's not even a single crochet, I don't think. 
So draw up that loop and draw it through the one on the hook. Okay. So in again underneath both the legs that I've targeted. Around, pull through, and through again. So in underneath both the legs. Okay, now I'm just making sure that I'm only catching those legs and I'm not, I'm absolutely not getting a hold of the right leg of that stitch, which is free for me to do when we come down the other side. Okay, so I'm going underneath the independent legs of those two stitches. And I'm going to continue all the way to the top like this. Okay, I've gotten all the way to the top and I'm about to finish off. So I'm just going to go down into the edge of my cast off, my bind off edge, and do another one. And then I'll just slip it around over that, over there, over the end. Okay, then I'll break the yarn and pull that through. Okay, you can do. All right, now you can see how that creates this chain edge makes the the steak want to turn that way and that's good that's just fine because what we want to have happen is for this center to be pulled apart a little bit so that you can see right here this is what we're going to cut when the time comes okay so we're going to do the exact same thing and we're going to start up here and we're going to work our way down now all right, we're doing the same thing. I've done a slip knot and gone around the, the very end. And now I'm going into this two legs that I've targeted. And again, the same slip stitch. Okay, and you just wanna make sure that you're not catching the one on the left there. So this is our target stitch. We've already separated that off on the left side. And so now our goal is to get a hold of the, the right leg of the center column along with the left leg of the next column over or where the tan is. So you want the right leg of the white stitch and the left leg of the tan one. I'm gonna set this down for a second and I'm gonna show you how I can determine where I'm going here. So I, I, again, I'm looking for the right hand leg of these stitches and the left hand leg of this column. So I'm just gonna bend this over to make sure I have that and follow it up here. So this is my next target right there okay and especially on this practice swatch if you know if you need to take this out and you get off track or you have the wrong column it's not that big of a deal if you need to do it over again it's totally fine just takes a little practice to be able to see it to see the legs of the stitches and the columns that you're aiming for okay so we can tell we're on track here because we're taking the left stitch of the white one and the right stitch of its neighbor. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go down. Whoops, now see, I should have just pulled this one through because I'm just doing a chain. There we go, I got ahead of myself there for a second. Okay. All right, I'm down to the bottom edge here and I'm just going to go ahead and pull this crocheted loop through. Break. Actually, I'll probably just do one extra chain and then break that off and pull that. I'll go ahead and pull that through and tighten up my little knot. Okay, so now if we straighten this out and take a look, you can see that my, my edges are both pointing away from the center and so that that makes it pretty easy to pull that apart and see where we're gonna cut. All right, so we're gonna do it. So I have a teeny sharp scissors and I'm just going to take, I haven't woven in the ends yet. You can certainly do that before you cut if you want to. You could go in here and weave in all your ends first if that bothers you and it's, you know, they're in the way. So I'm just gonna pull this apart and I'm gonna go ahead with my tiny scissors and I'm gonna cut right up that center line there. Okay, so you're gonna have to get through your, your bind off edge first and go ahead and snip. And you can see the line, you can see the horizontal bars that we're cutting, see that right there? And you can do them one at a time. You just wanna make sure 
and go slowly so that you're not cutting any loops, you're not cutting the edges of the stitches that you've just crocheted. You don't want to get, you don't want to cut the gray crochet thread that you did. So just be mindful of go easy and intentionally, whoops, you want that one though. Okay, and you're cutting through your floats as well. So we're just gonna go carefully here. And alternatively, if you don't wanna do the crochet thing, you can also sew that. You can sew a couple of lines of um, straight straight stitch and you know small, small bites, small needle, what am I trying to say? Small, short stitches, shorter stitches, that's what I mean. Um, some people do zigzags, just short stitches are, is fine. So I'm almost to the end here and I'm gonna cut through my bind off edge. Up oh, there we go. And there's our sample. Okay. And you can see there how that's being held secure by our crocheted edge and that makes a neat, neat edge. Now it is possible for you to pick at this and have these loops come out. And if, um, yeah, so don't, don't do that. <laughs> Some people also prefer to uh, sew a ribbon around this edge to make it a little bit neater and to feel more secure of, about that. And you can certainly do that. My daughter wanted to do that on her sweater. She um, took a one inch ribbon and sewed around the edge. When you go to pick up stitches for a button band, rather than picking up the legs of a stitch that will maybe tend to pull some of these loops, like I mentioned, you don't wanna be picking at these and pulling them out. Um, what you wanna do instead, if you're going to, is to go in between your columns. So these, this is a knitted column here. You'd wanna go down in there to pick up your button band, for example, okay? So instead of picking up a leg right here, you wanna go just down between the stitches and pick up for your button band. So you're not pulling on any stitches or pulling on any legs, you'd go to, down between. And since since this is a, uh, this was a five steak, five stitch steak, um, I would go down right there when I'm picking up for the button band. So that's gonna cause all of this to turn back when we pick up for the button band, all of these stitches will turn under and then your button band would come out right here. Okay, so if you wanna see that done, hop on over to the Maya Cardigan playlist, and I'll be uploading a video shortly regarding that. I hope you found that helpful. I would love to see your projects post in the Facebook of the Raveler group and show me your steaked samples or your Maya Cardigan sweater or any other sweater that you're working on that you're going to cut. I'd love to see what you have going on. Thanks for watching.